Hello, my name is John, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Microtonal Guitar Tablets for Playback on Windows. I currently use Windows 10, so that's what I'll be demonstrating here. Depending on which operating system you use, or if you download later versions of the software seen in this video, certain things might be different, but the general process should still be applicable in those cases. With the exception of the tab program I like to use, everything in this video can be downloaded for free. I'll be using Tabit as my guitar tab program. This should work with Guitar Pro or any other tab software that has the ability to set its MIDI output. The first thing we'll need other than a tab program is a piece of software called Loop MIDI. This will be used to capture the output of the tab program and reroute it into a digital audio workstation for manipulation. This video will demonstrate Loop MIDI version 1.0.16. Links to all software referenced in this video will be included in the video description. The next thing we'll need is a digital audio workstation for receiving the MIDI output of our tab program. Reaper is a great option. It's not technically free, but it does have an unlimited trial period. Any high quality DAW software will work, however, if you are more comfortable using something else. This video will demonstrate Reaper version 6.78. Lastly, we'll need a virtual instrument that can be retuned outside of the standard 12 equal divisions of the octave tuning. This will turn our MIDI data into actual sound. For this, we'll be using Sforzando, a free sound font player. This video will demonstrate Sforzando version 1.973. The next step is not strictly necessary. Sforzando has some basic sounds included, and you can load any sound fonts that you can find anywhere on the internet into it. But if you want your tab to sound like the classic Windows MIDI library that you might already be used to, you'll need to download that library, which is known as gm.sf2. Now, install Loop MIDI, Reaper, and Sforzando. If you've opted to go with the Windows MIDI sound font, don't worry about installing that. We will simply open the file with Sforzando later. Once you've installed each of these three programs, we can begin configuration. The first thing that we need to do is to open Loop MIDI and create a virtual MIDI port by clicking the plus button on the bottom left of the window. This will allow us to route our MIDI signals to places they normally would not be able to go. Next, we'll open our tab software and set the MIDI output to match our new Loop MIDI virtual port. In Tabit, this is done by going to Tools, Options, and selecting the Play tab, click MIDI Output Device, and select Loop MIDI Port. Click OK. To confirm data is passing into the virtual port, do something in your tab program that would normally generate sound out of the speakers. You'll see that when I type some numbers into the program, no sound is heard. Instead, Loop MIDI updates its total data and throughput per second columns, meaning that the data is passing through Loop MIDI. Now open Reaper and navigate to Options Preferences. In the Audio section on the left, click MIDI Devices. Loop MIDI Port should appear in the list of MIDI inputs. Right click Loop MIDI Port and select Configure Input. Check Enable Input from this device and click OK. Then click OK on the Preferences menu. In Reaper, we'll need to create a track for each instrument track in our tab program. Let's start with just one. Click Track, Insert New Track. The track should appear. Now, right click on the red circle, go down to Input MIDI, then Loop MIDI Port, and select Channel 1. This channel number will match the track placement in Tabit. That is, the top track will be Channel 1, the track below that will be Channel 2, etc. I imagine Guitar Pro is the same, but that'll be up to you to figure out if you use that. Worth noting, due to MIDI standards, if you are going to tab drums, those will always end up as channel 10. Now arm the track by clicking the red circle. You can test if the MIDI data is being received from your tab program by doing something in it on track 1 that would normally make sound. Again, here I'll just type some numbers. You can see in Reaper that when Tabit is generating MIDI data, the track is receiving MIDI data. Now we need to add the virtual synth that will actually generate the microtonal sounds. Click the FX power button on the track. Under all plugins, open the VST3i section and select Sforzando. This first time we're going to import the gm.sf2 file so that we have our classic Windows general MIDI library. This only needs to be done once. We do this by clicking Instrument, Import, then selecting the file and clicking Open. This is the same process that you can use to add any sound fonts to Sforzando. Once that's loaded, let's set this track to Distorted Guitar. Now that this track is fully routed, we should be able to actually generate sounds from our tab program through Reaper. Again, I will test by typing some numbers onto the fretboard.
Here's where things can finally get interesting. The next step is to import a Scala file that will retune the MIDI notes to our desired microtonal tuning. The most well-known option for generating Scala files is the program from which they originate, Scala. Another popular option is Sevish's Scale Workshop. I will be using the microtonal virtual synth web app that I created, Color Horizons, to generate a 17 equal divisions of the octave Scala file for use here. My app can be found at colorhorizons.com. To generate a 17 equal divisions of the octave file, navigate down to Scale Creation Tools, and then click the Equal Divisions of the Octave button. Type 17 into the field. Click the export.scl button and save in your desired location. Let's return to Reaper and apply the scale in question. Click the green FX icon to open up Sforzondo. Click the Settings tab, look for the Tuning section, then Set next to the Scala file input. Navigate to your Scala file and click Open. The scale is now applied. Now, go back to your tab program and make some sounds. The microtonal scale should be applied. Now, you'll need to set your string tuning to match whatever you use on the guitar. This I'll have to leave up to you to figure out, since there's such a vast array of possibilities. That's enough to get a single, basic track tabbed out. If you want to put together a full composition, you'll need to add more tracks. To add another track, in tab it, click Song, Add Track, and then of course use the same string tuning that you used for your first track. In Reaper, right-click on your first track, and select Duplicate Tracks. On the new track, right-click the red circle, select Input MIDI, Loop MIDI Port, and select Channel 2. As I mentioned before, each track will need to match in this menu with its location in Tabit, with the exception of the drum track, which will always be channel 10. Repeat this process until you have a track for every instrument in your composition in both Tabit and Reaper. That's it. Hopefully this video helps you get microtonal guitar tablature with MIDI playback setup. It might seem like a lot of steps, but it's pretty easy once you figure out the process. Have fun. All right, thanks for watching.